Hi guys, Nigel here, Nigel's Modeling Bench, and I've got another tool review for you today from Premium Hobbies. And these are the world famous Infini cutting mats that pretty much everybody's heard of now, I think. Um, today I wanted to review these and give you a kind of practical demonstration, a couple of hints and tips and do's and don'ts. This is actually take two of this video. The first video I did, I did it sort of blind. Um, I hadn't even taken them out of the packets, so you got to see me use them as a complete novice. I watched that video back and I thought, no, it's, it's pointless really. Um, it's great to show you what not to do. It's just as easy to show you how to do it right and tell you what not to do. So that's what I'm doing. Um, so everything I learned from the first video, I've had a little play with them since. So now I can actually put together a half decent video and show you what these are all about. Start by saying thank you to all my subscribers. Thank you for all the great comments you give me. Thanks for the donations everybody's given me on PayPal. It's wonderful. It's all going towards a new camera and I, I think I'm pretty much there. I'm looking at perhaps even going to look next week now. Um, so I'm going to go for a really nice video camera that will zoom in and zoom out and blah, 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 blah. Um, I no longer use Patreon. So if any of you are still registered on Patreon, um, please um, cancel your subscription. I don't use it anymore. Um, the only reason being is I think the charges they charge are ridiculous. If you donate £10 to the channel, I actually see about £8 of that, which I think is ridiculous. So, um, without further ado, let's get on looking at these four cutting mats. Okay, so we'll start by looking at the um, card insert. All four mats come in the same bag. Four mats? No, yeah, all four cutting mats are formatted. All four cutting mats come in a bag like this, which is the typical like your Eddard photo etch. But what I do really like about this bag, and I'm sorry to go on about packaging again, we all know how difficult it is to get stuff back in because we've often got this gluey tape on here. And what we do is we glue it down to the bench and then fold it over. But these bags, the glue stays on the outside. So really easy to just slide things in and out without it all catching up. So yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> that's hardly a bonus is it but you know it, it's there um so cutting mat type a is basically just straight lines so we'll go through that in a second cutting mat type b gives us uh radii uh, so we can cut curves and cut cones and all sorts which is really really handy and then we've got um, we've got C, which again is all radii, but on a much bigger scale. And I know what you're thinking, if, you, if your mind works like mine, that is the Millennium Falcon. So there you go. If you build Millennium Falcons, that one's going to be a must for you. And then you've got this one here, which is all the little triangles and hexagons and all sorts. And I've had a little play with that one because, to be honest, when I first looked at it, I thought, mm, I don't know. I've actually realised it's got a great use. Um, so... Let's have a look at number uh, letter A. This is letter A. They're all the same size. They are all, it says on here, 215 by 116 by 3 millimetres. Now, I always thought these were aluminium. I have seen a few reviews before. Never really paid a lot of attention. I always thought it was a bit gimmicky. Now that I've got them in my hands, um, I think they're awesome. I, I think they're absolutely brilliant. They're actually made of acrylic. Um, and basically, you've got... It's basically, uh, there's a protective shield on there, but I won't peel it off. Um, once this is worn out, because like with everything, it will wear out. What I will say is, as it wears, it will probably get easier to use because the grooves will only get deeper. But um, the you, once it does wear out, you've got a cutting mat for your photo etch and everything. So that's handy. Um, price wise, they are the A and the C are £13.50 each from Premium Hobbies. And B and D are fourteen ninety five. Now, I've set up a, a, a deal with Ed. Basically, if you see this on my channel and you want to go and buy it from him, if you quote NMB10, that's Nigel's Modeling Bench 10, NMB10, you'll get 10% off everything on his site. Um, and that includes items that are already at sale prices, such as the, the Premium Hobbies glue holder which I've got here in my hand which I don't believe is on his website yet but he's actually got the singles as well so you can get um you can get 10% off of them as well and also we've got the premium hobbies flat sanders if you haven't seen these they're great I've done a review of them um, go take a look absolutely brilliant and that whole thing there is only 9.95 so yeah really really cool anyway back to these cutting mats 
So this one is basically straight lines. So if we take a piece of 18mm Tamiya tape and we stick it on here, we can get some lovely straight lines from it. Now, if you notice, I haven't gone over the edge. Something I have found, it is a lot easier to start your cut off of the edge and then come across than it is to start in the middle of the tape. Now, obviously, sometimes with complex shapes and stuff, you're going to have to start in the middle of the tape, but it's much easier to pick up the line because I don't know if you're aware, but basically what you would normally do is come along with a rule and cut your masking tape. With this, you don't need the rule. You just stick the blade in the groove and cut down. So I'm going to go on the over here to this 0.7, second one across, pick up the groove and then just cut down. And the knife stays in there and as you can see I can get the edge nice and square stick that tape over there and then I can come across here cut down and I've got a piece of 0.7 wide masking tape there which is ready for use okay and then again I can cut down here 0.7 and if I want that to be 10 millimeters long I can go cut in there in fact like I said cut off of the off of the tape and into the tape so I can cut across here in like that and I can go here is 10 millimeters so if I wanted a load of 0.7 by 10 millimeters tape there we go so I can take away the excess there take away the excess there he says and now I've got three pieces of 0.7 millimeter 10 millimeter long so you can imagine the scope for this if you're doing like digital camo schemes and stuff you know you can actually cut your squares out perfectly square put them on rather than having to mess around with a rule and stuff also if you're doing um, canopy masking if you know what size the glazing is you'd be able to you know trim it up and if you want to just square everything off you just come across come across and there we go there's our bits of tape Okay, and then I can come, come this way on this one, square it up. So now I've got everything is squared up, so I've got a nice clean sheet to start from. So I can come down here now, and I can cut down there, I can cut down there. I missed one then. Okay, and then I've got basically... A load of 0.8 strips to work with. I caught the top one there and pushed it down unfortunately. But there we go. So you can see you get the general idea what we're doing here. I should have gone from from right to left instead of left to right but never mind. But you get the general idea we can cut our strips of tape like so and there you go you've got all your strips of tape there and you just take them off as you need them and use them on your model okay the other beauty of this of course is if you're doing it on your cutting mat and you want to just say a couple of strips you end up leaving the tape on your cutting mat the excess tape with this you just leave it on there put it to one side when you want to come back and use it again you just use it again so um it's as simple as that a couple of do's and don'ts um when i first started doing this i looked on here and you can see they're using this Ulfa pea cutter knife and I happen to have an Ulfa cutting knife. But what I found is the blade, if you were to look at it end on, I think the blade is actually fatter. I think it's more of an acute angle than this scalpel. So what happens is when you try and use this, I found it kind of wanders. Now, there you go, it wandered on the end. It pops up out of the groove. So I, I was really hoping and praying this was going to be perfect because I don't have a lot of use for these knives I've got lots of blades for them one of the things I don't particularly like with these knives going off subject is when you cut something out on a rule it's very difficult to stay straight it tends to want to wander off just like it does in these mats so my advice is steer clear of those stay clear of the the, the Olfa knife and just stick with the Exacto um, or your your Swan Morton scalpels and blades and stuff because they seem to perform a lot better so that's type a 
And as I say, you, you've got your sky's the limit. You can cut all sorts of different widths and lengths and everything. And now, you know, when you do a repetitive masking, um, like for instance, if you're masking off to paint some missiles or something, and you know it's 0.8 wide, you know that the diameter of your missile is six millimeters. So therefore, you're going to want 20 millimeter lengths. You can now cut, you know, your 0.8 wide, 20 millimeter lengths, bang, 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 stick them on your missiles, job done. You're no longer going to be having to measure out your 0.8, and, you know, because it's very difficult to measure 0.8, because if you're using a standard rule, you don't have 0.8 on there. So um, now you've got the ability to do whatever you want from 0.4 to one millimeter wide and up to 190 millimeters long. So, uh, yeah, pretty cool. That's A. Looking at B, this is the next one in the series, which is just as handy because now we're going to start looking at curves and stuff and circles. Now, on here you can see we've got a full circle and this goes in a radius up to 47 and a half millimetres. So basically we've got differences of five millimetre diameter here and I believe these are going to be two millimetre diameter here. So basically each of these steps on the outside is two and a half millimetres. So if you think of it, this is 20, 22 and a half radius, sorry, 22 and a half, 25, 27 and a half, 30, 32 and a half, and so on. And then down here, we've got these four circles and you can see here there's a mark 3.5, 5.5, 7.5, 9.5 and 12. And again here, 2.5 to 10.5. Here we've got 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. And here we've got 3, 7, 5, 3, 5, 7, 9, 11. So we've got all our different diameters on there. So cutting out circles is not easy. It's going to take some practice. But I've got a resin wheel here. No plug intended. And I know that it's 10 and a half millimeters diameter. So I'm going to basically come along here with this mat and I'm going to pick up the outside edge, the outside groove, should I say, get into that groove. And then I'm going to cut around and just a little bit at a time without going too mad. Just going to cut around. And as I say, it needs some practice. It's not the easiest thing in the world to do picking up these grooves through the tape and the reason I'm holding it up is because with the light the way it is I can't see through the tape when it's like this but usually what you would do is have it flat on the table and just cut through it like so now a lot of you will be thinking just use a circle cutter exactly you could just use a circle cutter when I show you the bigger stuff, you'll see why this is so handy. So basically now I've made that 10 and a half mil circle in there so I can come along, pull that out. And now I've got a perfectly cut circle that I can mask the wheel with. And I'd probably be better off with a pair of tweezers. Come along. Put that on that wheel. Press it down. And there we go. I've made a mask for my wheel. So there's one of the uses for that. The other thing is, if you were trying to say, say you had a cone and you wanted to mask a line to spray some grooves or some, um, some lines on there around the cone, then you can come along, um, put your tape on here. Now I've got a cone, again, no plug. This is one of the modified pieces I've made for the Antonov 124 engines. Um, and I know that I need roughly this diameter here. So let's just say I want to mask off. And if you notice, I'm moving the board around and leaving the knife stationary. What I found is that makes life a lot easier for cutting curves. Okay, so I can take that out there. And then I can stick this on here. Go around. So say it was a spinner or, you know, like this, a cone. I want to mask a straight line around there. There we go. Easy as that. So, and obviously for different, different sizes and everything. And basically, rule of thumb, if you're looking for the, um, the radius, 
is measure the diameter and double it. That should give you roughly what you're looking for. Um, and obviously with your Tamiya tape, you've got some flex anyway. And if you want to do bigger rads, you can. And there's also board C, which gives you even bigger radii there. These ones down here, I'm not going to talk about now because we've got this um, in more detail on D. But basically with these, you can put your tape over the top and you can cut out some intricate little shapes. Um, for instance, I'll cut this away square on the end. Now, if I was doing a, um, a digital camo scheme, say, and I wanted lots of little squares, I could just come along like this and then I'll square this up okay and then come along and I've got lots of little squares ready to go you just take one off and put it on your model all right so there's your squares um, and then if you wanted uh, a sort of a triangle and if these angles work out correct for you then you can um, say so it's difficult picking up in, off, the, off the tape but you can come across here and then you've got a, a triangle should you want one okay and then you've got all your different angles down here squares and smaller squares so really this is the limit for what you want to do with all that C again is just the same thing um, like for instance if you were doing a 144th scale uh, Millennium Falcon and you want to mask off those panels you know you sort of measure out your radius so if it's 100 if, if it's 144th scale I'm guessing that the, the roughly radius is going to be like 110 mil on the outside so you've got a radius 110 there so you would put your tape on like so there so you've got your 110 mil radius there so get in that groove come round cut that out in that groove come round cut that out now you know that you want your end to be you know you want it say that long yeah and then you can just come along take the scrap away get under the corner of the tape and there's your panel for masking your, uh, your Millennium Falcon and then if you've got the 72nd scale you could be up to here so we've got radius here um, from what's that you've got all the way down to that's about 90 there and then you've got 110 120 all the way up to 200 and then you're coming out here and you're going up to your 500s now so uh, really really handy thing for, for measuring and for masking around cones and stuff so if you're doing a Saturn 5 this would be invaluable for doing your cone at the top of stage th three is it or stage two so there we go there's that one now this one cutting these shapes out I'm not gonna lie is extremely difficult because you're trying to cut around these these radii and it is difficult okay now I'll show you just so you can see how I struggle you can come around with your knife staying in the groove oh, it seems a lot easier this time so you can see with a bit of practice I've only had about 10-15 minutes practice you can see the trouble I have is getting the perfect radii where I stop so maybe I can go back in the groove again and clean it up but there's the there's the piece of tape and if I put it down on there you can see it's not bad but it's not perfect okay it's a lot better than it, than you could do freehand but um there you go it's not that easy now what I found really handy with all this down here you've got these basically you've got 45 degree um, angles on spacings of two mil two and a half three and three and a half millimeters so you're wondering yeah why okay keep watching and then we've got here we've got um, hexagons so we could actually if we wanted to mask off a hexagon make a hexagon for an emblem or something we can go down there 
down there and then come across here and then come across here and you, you can basically make whatever shape you want in those hexagon in those hexagonal shapes okay and then the other thing I thought <clears throat> this would be really handy for would be your lettering so if you wanted to make say a standard um, stencil masking for your for your US Air Force aircraft say I'll just square this up okay so we can square that up like so all right now if I wanted to make the letter N I can come in here It's easier to come off of the tape than on it. Go in there, come up there, come down there, and then come down there. And there you can see I've made an N or a Z. It's probably more of a Z than an N. Um, and then you've got obviously this one here and you can go smaller and smaller so if I want to make something a smaller energy <laughs> I can come in here go across I always start by squaring up I guess that's because my engineering background if you're milling something or making something from a block you would always start by squaring up so I can come in here again come off the tape <clears throat> square this end up like so and then I can come in and then follow that line out to there nope that's one over like that and then come up here And then come down, come down that one, come down that one. And there you are, you can see now, we've made a smaller one. And as you can see there, you know, you can do whatever you want. If you look on the the insert card that comes with it for D you can see all these different shapes here they've made like you've got your um your chevrons there for your IDF stuff you know and it's it's a it just makes life a lot easier when you want to do equilateral diamonds or triangles or whatever you can do whatever you want so there we go and as I say I would stick with this knife or this knife this knife, the Alpha P cutter, tends to wander out of the groove very easily. And I could only think it's because it's got a sharp, a, a more obtuse angle on the blade or something. But it just doesn't like staying in the grooves. Whereas these two, they're sort of pretty difficult to pull out of the groove, really. So, um, <clears throat> hope you've enjoyed that. I have. Um, and thanks again to Ed for sending me these. Um, extremely grateful. As I say, if you're tight on your budget, but you want one of these go for the A definitely and then next go for the B and you know I, th I think those two you will use more than than these two if you're into your Millennium Falcons I think that one's a must as I say this one I don't know these shapes here I certainly struggle with I would imagine with practice or using a different blade or something I would imagine cutting these shapes would become a lot easier but right here right now I struggle a little bit to be honest um, and I didn't mention you've got these curves up here as well, which are really handy for uh, for like large canopies and stuff or, or going around large curves. So there we go, guys. That's the uh, Infini cutting mats. Um, really do like these Infini products. As you're probably aware, I've got these sanders that I've been using. I've got the flexible sanding sheets now. They're wonderful. They work with those little uh, sanding blocks I showed you just now. These Matador sticks absolutely amazing and these sponges 
again absolutely amazing <clears throat> and as i say all available from premium hobbies give that a call drop a line get on the website he's on facebook and twitter as well so yeah you can not twitter sorry that's instagram isn't it um <clears throat> Get on there, have a look at his site. As I say, NMB10, you'll get a 10% discount off everything. And I mean everything, even if it's already discounted. He does all the Mr. Hobby range of, um, of Mr. Surfacer and everything, as you know, I love. Um, he's got the MRP paints. He does a few kits. He's got some photo etch on there. Go and have a look around his site. He's going to be at Telford as well. And as I say, NMB10 gets you 10% off everything on the site. So thanks for watching, thanks for, again for all your comments, and if you've got any hints and tips for me for using these, please put them in the comments below. Bye for now.